We all know that the skill of writing is one of the most important skills that gets you through nursing school. But did you know that less than 6% of nursing programs offer a course that helps students actually write? Only 6%, which is probably why you're here on YouTube trying to learn more about scholarly writing. You've got to stay locked into this series of videos where I get you familiar with what scholarly writing is and how to develop your scholarly writing skills for nursing school. Hi everyone, my name is Professor Jess V and this is LJ. Say hello. Welcome to my channel. If you're new here, this channel was created to support nursing and healthcare students just like you. As a nursing professor and educator, I offer tips and expert advice that will help you succeed in school and in your new career. If this is something that you're interested in, show me some love and support. Hit that like button now or leave a comment and subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on weekly videos. In another video, I provided a brief introduction and description of what scholarly writing is and how it is used in nursing school. In fact, I cover a few tips and strategies that you might find helpful as you get started with scholarly writing. So if you haven't checked that out yet already, I'll include the link in the description box below. Now, as a professor, I've seen firsthand just how many students struggle with writing in nursing school. Being able to express your ideas, your perspectives, and opinions in your writing is critical in nursing. When you enter university or college, you will be expected to write your assignment and papers in a scholarly way. So today, we're going through some professor-approved tips to help you develop scholarly writing skills for your next assignment. Tip number one, give yourself time and space to write. Scholarly writing is not something you can do the night before. It just doesn't work that way. It takes time and space. So start your assignment early so you have the time and clear thinking space to dive deep into your thoughts and reflect. I tell students to start their assignment at least a week in advance. Now, depending on what's going on in your life, of course. So, so that you can think, reflect, clear your mind of distractions and noise that might impede the writing process. Plan ahead and organize your other commitments so that you have the time and clarity to write. For example, do you know how long it took me to write this script for this video? Five days. Yes, that's right. Five days. As much as this video might seem like it was put together in no time, in actuality, it took me a good amount of time to organize my ideas, do a little bit of research, and set up a final script. Remember, it's normal for the writing process to involve going back and forth as new ideas come up and as you research new information. You might have an idea or something to include and then you'd end up deleting it. And then you go back and you add something and then lead you to something else. That's just the way writing goes. It's an iterative process, meaning it goes back and forth. So you can expect that as you engage in your writing, that's what will happen. Tip number two. Organize your assignment, create an outline. Before putting down any thoughts or ideas onto paper or conducting any research, get your thoughts organized. Scholarly writing is not only about what you say, but how you say it and how it's presented to the reader. So what you wanna do is create some type of outline or a skeleton to help organize your thoughts. Now, a trick that I tell students to do is to use the same headings or elements that are in the assignment instructions to help you organize your outline that way. For example, let's say your assignment instructions look like this. In this scholarly paper, the student will reflect on their beliefs, assumptions, and values related to health and health promotion. Number one, the student will reflect on their social identity and how their identity and life expectations shape their understanding and experience of health. Number two, the student will clearly articulate and describe an exemplar community. Number three, a community health nursing lens. The student will suggest one or two evidence-based examples of health promotion at the community or society level. 
And number four, finally, the student will consider how their social identity may act as a facilitator and barrier if working as a community health nursing. If I look at the way the instructions are provided here, I know right off the bat that I will need to include a minimum of four sections. I'd probably have my introduction, number one, number two, social identity or life experiences, number three, my exemplar community, number four, health promotion examples, number five, facilitator and barriers, and number six, finally, my conclusion. There's my skeleton or my outline for the assignment taken right from the professor's instructions so I can ensure that I'm covering each element of the assignment. Tip number three, dump your ideas. Once you have your assignment outline or skeleton, then you're ready to do the dump. A brain dump, that is. Not the other kind of dump. That would be kind of gross. <laughs> okay, so here's your chance to just unload your thoughts about the topic. Write down your ideas in point form or list them under each section. Now, don't worry about spelling or grammar or editing. Just write. The whole purpose of this exercise is to simply put your thoughts on paper and organize them under the general headings that you created. Go through each of the headings or topics and simply state what you know or what you think you need to emphasize or discuss in that section. As you're dumping out your thoughts, you might identify ways that you can start to link or connect those ideas and organize them so they're more cohesive. But overall, the main point of this exercise is to dump your ideas and begin the process of organizing them under each of the headings. Tip number four, dig a little deeper into the literature. You might notice that when you did your brain dump, you didn't have much information about a specific topic or issue. This is the time to educate yourself about a topic or find credible sources and information that are relevant. You might need to look up sources such as peer-reviewed articles or journals and best practice guidelines. As you come across relevant information, you can simply paraphrase that idea and include it in your assignment. Now remember, scholarly writing includes backing up your ideas with evidence. So if you find something in the research that you want to include, be sure to paraphrase it or put it in your own words and include the citation in the body of your essay as well as in your reference page. Tip number five, formulate your main idea or thesis statement. Once you've done your research and you've learned more about the topic or issue, you can now formulate your own perspective or your main message. That's what we call your thesis statement. Your thesis is the main argument or the main idea in your paper. Now remember, your thesis is not the topic itself but rather your interpretation or your perspective of the topic. Here are a few questions you can ask yourself to help develop a thesis statement. Number one, what is my stance, perspective, or opinion about the issue? Number two, do I agree with the author's position or statement about the topic? The point is that your thesis statement or the position or perspective you have about a topic will be informed by the research that you've done. But do you need a thesis for every assignment? The answer is no, it depends. A thesis may not be required depending on what type of scholarly writing you're doing. For example, a reflection won't require a thesis statement because it's simply asking you to describe or summarize an experience that you had. Now, if you're not sure whether you need a thesis statement, just reach out to your professor to make sure you're on the right track. Remember, the skill of scholarly writing will take time and practice. As students, your professors aren't asking you to be perfect writers. I know I'm not. We simply want you to develop the skills of communication, communicating your thoughts, your ideas, your perspectives in a clear, succinct, accurate, and professional way. If you're looking for more information on how to develop your scholarly writing skills, share them with me in the comments below so I know what types of videos and resources to create for you. Now, if you're ready to get started with your writing and you're using APA format, check out my videos on how to help you create your APA assignments. Hey guys, thanks for joining me on the JLT channel today. I promise I've got more good content for you like this video over here. And don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, hit that notification bell, and even share this video with a friend. 
because it's just like that. 